OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for everyone being here in person and online. Hopefully everyone online can hear me. If you can hear me, say yes in the chat, please. And if you can see the screen and I provide the link to the slideshow in the chat. So just uh, please make sure just to let us know. Cool, Susanna, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about using thinking routines with interactive slides to amplify student engagement, collaboration, and learning. This has been something that I've been doing for probably the last five years, starting in the classroom experience at the K-12 level, working with secondary students, a lot of multilingual learners, a lot of students with diverse learning needs, and really taking this approach. Taking this approach to really engage students, but doing it in a scaffolded way so that they can solve problems and apply these, these types of thinking routines that I'm going to talk about to really a wide range of content, ranging right? from learning English to algebra to um, social science. So it the goal of these is essentially it's a, it's a set of strategies or content agnostic. So I'm going to talk about about that as we go. So if you can, if you're in person, there's a QR code right there, please scan that and it will take you to this presentation. It'll take you to my flow page. If you scroll all the way down to where it says OTAN, uh, TDLS at the very bottom, then um, you'll be able to access this slide deck. And I would love for you to access this slide deck because there's gonna be a number of opportunities where you can have a time to really play with this and be the student and see what it feels like and looks like. Um, you can do it on your phones, but um, if you're at home, PC is probably the easiest. When I do thinking routines with students, I have them all have like a Chromebook or they're at a computer. I've done it with phones before, so it's possible. So uh, just a little bit about myself before we, while you guys are doing that. So I work for Education Career Network in North San Diego County. I basically am the tech integration, which is the technology coordinator, but I do all of our professional development, all of our coaching, um, all focused on teaching and learning and tech integration for our six schools. I work with about 125 teachers, um, building capacity with them um, in our CTE, ESL, and our um, AB, ASE transition classes. So wide range of students, wide range of uh, content areas. So um, this is something that we focused on these thinking routines um, last spring, and we're really re-engaging in them this uh, spring as well for a series of professional learning opportunities that we have. So this is something that we're doing each and every day in our context. So, um, and these classes are in-person online and uh, they're in a blended session for most part. All righty, so what are thinking routines? So they come from, so they're derived from Harvard's Project Zero, and it's essentially a series of strategies where you can take a routine of scaffolds that help students think about some a question, problem, etc. And it allows you throughout the course of a lesson to scaffold how students are thinking and for you as a teacher to see how students are thinking throughout the time that they're with you. So you can provide and monitor um, how they're doing and you can give them feedback. So that's really what they are. They're used as a also formative assessment because you're just consistently monitoring what students are doing in real time on the slides. So that is something that is really cool. And um, I like to use Google Slides as the interactive slides, but you can use a wide range of slides. You can use PowerPoint, you can use add-ons to slides such as Pear Deck, EarPod, you can do quizzes live. Um, there's a lot of different tools that you can use that 
encompass what I call interactive slides. I prefer Google Slides because that's what I've historically done. I think they're the easiest for students to play with and utilize in classes and are the easiest things to, to learn. So that's why I recommend using Google Slides. And I have my slideshow out like this for this presentation because I'm gonna show you how it looks for when I'm going through these thinking routines. So you'll see why in a minute. So like I mentioned, we wanna engage your students in active learning opportunities. So after you provide direct instruction and model how to do something, then you wanna release the students to do something actively. And as an instructor, you wanna really chunk the time that you're talking. You wanna have students do more of the work. So that's kind of my philosophy is, is that Provide them with that short little direct instruction, but then have them go and complete that task, release them to. And that's what thinking routines does. And you can do it in a scaffolded way throughout your lesson. You're going to see what it looks like in a minute. Um, and I mentioned all these things. And I think it's an equitable strategy because you can do this synchronously together live, in person, online. Um, or they can be doing it asynchronously. You can provide them with a video of how to complete this thinking routine and they can follow along and complete it. So it can be done really together in the class and whole group, or it can be done on an individual basis after they've watched uh, an instructional video. So I mentioned a number of these strategies that are basically incorporated in the thinking routine. So formative assessment, scaffolding, modeling during guided practice, gradual release, I do, we do, you do, because it's fun with these in here teams so you can play students in small groups or pairs, and then they can do it independently. Um, you're being direct and explicit with your instruction because you're essentially doing an initial model you're going to see in a moment. And then you use tagging cooperative learning strategies as well um, with these types of thinking routines to make them collaborative. So there's a wide range of opportunities here. And I mentioned some of these tools that you can use these um, thinking routines with, but you can do also low tech options as well. You can have a piece of paper like I have given you, and you can have the thinking routine printed out on a piece of paper. And you're gonna be doing that at the very end of doing the low tech option when you're here in person. So that's kind of a cool thing. And I wanted to mention that, um, when you are participating in this, if you would like, you will be able to be in a drawing to win a book. So hopefully that gives you some more motivation to want to participate in some of these thinking routines I'm gonna go over in a minute. Um, when you wanna deploy these thinking routines, um, so you can use your uh, Canvas LMS, you can have your slideshow hyperlink directly into Canvas or embedded in a Canvas. That's an easy way for your students to access it. You can put in the link like I just did on Zoom at the very uh, top right here on in the chat. You could um, just paste it in the chat and give them access to the thinking routine in the chat. Um, you can put it on a QR code, similar to what I just did. It could be a link directly to um, the slide deck or a landing page where the slide deck lives. So there's a lot of different ways that you can deploy this for your students. Um, so it's, um, I think makes it really easy. So let's talk about how this looks like in action. So the first strategy we're gonna talk about is called notice, wonder, inference. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm gonna model it. Then we're gonna to go to slide number 11 and you're gonna be the student in the case and interact with this thinking routine. So first off with notice, wonder, inference, this is what the thinking routine looks like on the slide. And see it's scaffolded into three different places, notice, wonder, inference. Each of the boxes is a scaffold for your students. And as a teacher, you have opportunities to have the students either work on each of these boxes individually or as a pair, or you could do a pair for um, one or two of those boxes. And then the last of the boxes is for them to do it um, by themselves. So 
here's how the strategy works. You provide them with a problem. It can be a worked example. It can be an image. It can be a, it can even be a short little video. It could be a GIF. It could be really essentially um, any sort of representation of something you want your students to evaluate and analyze. So if you look at this picture, for example, we have California and we have installation density and it says prior to 2007 and then 2007 to present. In this situation, I haven't given students um, really what this is about, but I've given them a lot of context clues. So what you'll do is now go to slide number 11 and click on the notice and wonder inference. And everyone here, I'm going to show you real quickly. So if you're a teacher and you have students in your class, let's see. I'm going to duplicate these slides. So say I have a group of 20 students in my class. I can quickly make these duplicates of the slide and I can start assigning students to slides or depending on how much responsibility they want them, they can just choose their own slide and write their name on it. So I'm going to create at least 15 of these slides and Right now, if you could, for those that are in person or online, if you would like to participate, please select a slide and put your name in the notice column so that you can get your slide for this activity and put your name there. So I have 16 so far. If we need more, I will do that. But as you notice, is that it's a template. So with a lot of these thinking routines is that if you have an article, these templates, then people can, you can easily make copies of it so your students can interact with it. And you want to make sure on the far left hand side when um, you are, anyone who has a link can access. And I want to just double check and make sure on my computer, anyone with a link can edit. And when anyone with a link can edit, anyone can essentially type or draw or do anything on the slides. That's when you can make them interactive. So I'm gonna just double check on my end, just making sure anyone can edit. Yes, anyone can edit. So go ahead, select your slide, write your name on it. As I see Sonia is done with her slide. So go ahead and select your slide real quick. Put your name on it and put it in the notice box. Give you about 30 seconds to do that. And then we'll jump into the protocol. Is the slide deck on your website? It is on the main slide. So for example, it's on my it's among it's on my presentation right here. And you're gonna click on notice wonder inference at the very top, and that takes you directly to the interactive slide. Oh, but we're trying to get to the presentation slide. Oh, I put it in the chat. No, but for the people here. Oh, that's on your QR code. So I, at the very beginning of it, it's on your QR code. So if we are trying to get access it from a laptop. Then you're going to go on to, um, let's see, at the very first part of the slideshow, you can go to flow page, flow.page slash Dr. Matt Rhodes, and then you're going to go all the way down to the bottom here. Hold on, pull back one more, sorry. So you'll go to flow page slash Dr. Matt Rhodes, and then you're going to go to my flow page, and you're going to go all the way down to the very bottom and click on using thinking routines with interactive slides. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No word. All right, so we're back here. You should be the end of the chat. I do see your slides. Yep. Sonia, Vicky, great. Thank you. If anyone has any issues, just go ahead and select your slide. So here's the first thing you would do with your students. You would have the image up on the board. Everyone's on their slide deck. And you would say first, class. 30 seconds to do this. First, think about it for about 
20 seconds. Start writing down what do you notice about what's happening here in this image based on what you're seeing? What's happening in this image? Write a number of bullet points. It can be a single word, it could be a phrase, it could be a short sentence. So go ahead and spend some time noticing what is going on here. I notice that X is happening. I notice blank. So go ahead and take this moment to write down what you notice. I'm not able to type on that screen. Is there a simple solution? You have to go, uh, you have to go here. You have to click on it. And then you're going to select the slide that you want to use. There you go. You can right here. Mm -hmm. So I usually give students, you know, depending, it just really depends on what group of students I'm working with. If it's someone that I'm just doing this for the first time, you can spend more time doing this. If it's a uh, group you've done this quite a bit, it can go pretty fast. You can do this, this entire sequence here in about five or six minutes. So I'm gonna give you about 30 more seconds for the notice slide. So, and as I can see, I can see everyone working. So what's nice is I can see everyone's progress in real time before I go back to whole class. So while the students are working, I can see what's going on. I can notice the trends of what they're writing, what they're saying. You can even show them some cool support within Google Slides, which I really like. Um, you can show them voice typing and speaker notes. So you can do voice typing and speaker notes to say something that you can support them with, or you could show your students, for example, to use the explore option if they want to use an image. You could have them search an image here and place it in the box instead of text. So there's a lot of adaptations that you can do that I think that can support a wide range of where your learners are at. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sentence or a phrase. It could be a picture, a series of pictures. It could be even a short video student's place for each of these boxes. So, all righty. So, here's how the sequence goes. So, after about that couple minutes of students, you know, thinking and writing down what they noticed, then I take them usually to a pair share. So, the students next to each other, they'll pair, pair share. And depending on the group of students I work with, sometimes I have a sentence frame um, to help the conversation. Sometimes depending on who I'm working with. And after they pair share, after they pair share, I go to whole class. And what I'll do is I'll post up a slide, for example, like Sonia's slide. And Maybe I'll I'll call on Sonia and, and tell and ask her like can you tell us what you and your partner noticed here on this diagram here so we go through I select one or two groups of students and sometimes I would add additional pieces of information sometimes I may have my own slide that I am modeling so. I may use my own slide that I'm modeling and jotting down everyone's notes here or some major themes in the notice box. It just depends. There's a lot of freedom here that you can utilize. So the next step after we talk about the first of the notice boxes, we go into wonder. And wonder is like a question. What, based on what you've noticed, class, what do you wonder that's going on here? What is this? image here trying to 
you know, illustrate. And then think about what are a couple of questions that you could come up with that you wonder that is happening here. So the students will then, for the next box, you're going to start down. Yep. So, for example, so. Uh, I didn't type that. Oh. From one no. to one. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, and then if someone did take the slide, um, I think they are using Zoom annotation. Yeah, someone's using Zoom annotation. So this you're not doing it on Zoom annotation for those that are online. You're going to so go to the slideshow in the chat and you're going to click on you're going to click on on the presentation right here here and access it there. You're not annotating on Zoom. So the next box, like I mentioned, you're writing down a couple of wonderings related to what's happening in this image. You're writing down what are a number of things that you're wondering about what's happening in this image. So I'll give you about a minute or two to write down a couple of questions that you may have that is could possibly be happening in this image. Then you can watch and review student progress, which is fantastic. Oh, someone went ahead. Just try not to go to the next box yet, please. Don't get ahead of the class. Sometimes that does happen. You have to tell you to try not to go ahead because we're not there yet to try and make those connections. There's always one. <laughs> About 10 more seconds. So as you notice here, uh, Sonia started writing down some questions. Are, move, are people moving? Uh, more people moving to California. Are people moving to where the work is? Why are the people moving? Then if we go to Vicki, why is the density changing throughout the years? Irma says, um, why so much more? Wondering what this all represents. What's it all about? Can't figure out. The title installation density, density of what? So we've come up with these questions. Now, what we'll do is sometimes you have as an instructor, you could just say these out loud. You could have the students just do a quick gallery walk review of the questions. But then you could say, now with a partner, I would like you to come up with an inference based on the questions that you've come up with, as well as observations. The, the noticing that you found, as well as your classmates, can you guys come up with a possible conclusion or inference of what you think is happening in this image? So now, everyone, please go and fill out the next box for inference. And based on the context clues and the questions that we presented, what is happening in this image to your best guess. So go ahead and spend some time writing that down. Oh, I. And then I will tell you at the very end what this means. So students get a ranking given five. 
And what's nice, I can continue to see how students are doing throughout this process. As an instructor, I can monitor and adjust kind of where I want the conversation to go. So this is something that is um, really helpful. Because you want to monitor and adjust instruction all the time based on what your students are thinking and doing. So someone writes a question after for wonder, you know, when you're going back, because I have a question I'm wondering about, and I can't put it in after the sentence. All right, so for time reasons, let's we'll move forward. So what this is actually, this represents the installation density of solar panels in the state of California from 2007 to present. So we can see where solar panels have been installed in California. So what you would do is I would first go through the students responses and we would talk about, you know, what exactly could we be thinking about? And then someone figured it out, it was solar panels, right? So, and you can see through this gallery walk here, um, you can have the students examine everyone's answers relating to their thinking process and how you got to that conclusion, right? So this is just an example of one thinking routine that um, you can do at the beginning of a lesson for the first like 10, 15 minutes. And it can go faster too. So based on if you do this quite often, it can be like five to eight minutes for any of these. And you're gonna see why. And then someone had a question. Well, I was just curious, like I wondered the chart is 2007 to present. What date is present? So I wondered that after you had already gone to inference. So I just wondered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is for that diagram, it means 2023. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. So the next the next thinking routines can be sequenced within a lesson. So the first one is see, feel, think, wonder. What the next one is claim support question. Another one's called a connect extend challenge. So what you can do with these is use a passage. So you can use an informational text. Yes. So there's a text that's saying they want you to show again how you duplicate. Oh, duplicate. Okay. okay. Yeah. So when you're duplicating a slide, um, so say I got my blank slide template. Um, I'll right click on the computer, or I'll double click on a touch screen, and I'll just click duplicate. Duplicate. Hopefully that helps them answer that question. Um, so yeah, so now you can put multiple within the course of a lesson. So see, feel, think, wonder, play with your question, connect, extend challenge, and you can start off with using like a uh, a text, it could be an informational text, it could be a story, it could be a poem, it could be whatever. It could be any sort of text. And what's nice is, is that you can either differentiate the text. So using a tool like News ELA, you can have three or four different versions of the same text going around based on reading level um, on multiple different slideshows within your um, class. So you'll see in a moment what I mean. So. First, I'm looking at this slideshow right here, and I'm going to make it big so everyone can see. This is a uh, about solar energy. It's uh, this is probably about a hot, like an eleventh grade reading level um, about solar energy. So I have one of these here. Then um, I have it slated on a number of slides that go after. So what you're going to notice is, is that I, you first would place this, the, um, the text in your slide deck first. So these would be the first two slides of your slide deck for your students. 
And then following that, you would have the following slide. You would have see, feel, think, wonder, claim, support, question, and then connect, extend, challenge. So the first thing you would do is that you can divide your students into pairs, or they could be doing this individually. And their first task would be, I would like you to first read the article and tell me, what did you see when you're reading this article? What do you feel when you read this article? What do you think when you're reading this article? And then what do you wonder after reading this article? So the students would go through, read it, be in pairs, be a small group, be individually. And I can model, for example, um, one of these boxes. I can say, I see X happening. I see X happening because um, you can provide those sentence frames in there and, mod and do that modeling if you would like. It's up to you. Um, so this would be the initial first read of the text, completing this here, this set of thinking routines. And depending on where your class is and their level, you could essentially just tell them, let's first do C after you finish reading. You're going to do C uh, together for a pair. Then we're going to come back in about five minutes, and then we're going to go over that. And then we'll do the same thing for feel, think, wonder. Or if they're for further advanced and where their thinking is and what their level is, you could essentially have them complete all of this at once. Then you can have a short conversation with the entire class, thinking of the example that I provided above uh, before with notice uh, wonder inference on um, everyone's findings. Then you can move into the next part of the lesson where it's claim support question. You could have the students individually or as a group first ask them, what is the claim of this article? What's it arguing? And you could write a sentence frame here. The article made your claim or made your thesis is X because we can model that here as a teacher and then essentially have the students then go into their own and complete this box. Or you could have them complete this all by by themselves or in a pair after you model. You know, this is what I'm looking for in each of these uh, boxes. So um, as you know, there's a lot of freedom in this based on where you think your learners are at. And I prefer the scaffolded approach first. We start off with a claim. You find a claim first, then um, five minutes later, 10 minutes later, we'll go and do the support box. Then we'll go and do the question box. But sometimes if you want them to be more independent, you could essentially have them complete everything after you read the log. Then at the very end of this sequence here, you could have this strategy, connect, extend, challenge. How do you connect what you read here to the world or your life? If I wanted to research this more, where would I go and extend my learning? And the last box is challenge. Is there anything in this article you don't disagree with? How would you challenge that? So you can do that towards the very end. So you can see here with this article, you can use these thinking routines throughout the course of, this could be an entire lesson. This could be an entire 30 minute to 45 minute lesson. Or you can only use one or two of these in your lesson with your students. It's up to you. So the next one, uh, another example would be uh, connections, challenges, concepts, and changes. This is another one right here. And what you can do, and I'm going to show you once again, you know, using the template, how you can duplicate these slides. So this is the slide deck that you would share with students on your Canvas page or on Zoom. And like I said, you can deploy it from that initial slideshow. You can put it within the chat on Zoom. There's a wide range of things, um, ways you can deploy it, like I mentioned. And then I would just then go to duplicate duplicate, duplicate. 
and just make as many as I need for my students. I can do that right beforehand, right before class, or based on how many students are in my class that day. Um, so for this one, I would like us to, this is uh, one of the last ones that we'll do. I know that we have, we're done here. What are we done? 9.30. 9.30, okay. Yeah, so we only have 15 minutes. So what I would do here, so this could be done at the end of the lesson, but so based on what you know so far on thinking routines, what connections can you make? What concepts do you think you could use this, these types of strategies with? What would be some challenges that you would have implementing this in your class? And then thinking about changes, how would you possibly change this or change a strategy or change maybe how it's deployed or the tool um, to meet your needs? So go ahead and choose a box right now. And I would like you to begin writing based on what you've seen so far, what connections were you able to make? What concepts does this is something that you could implement with that you're teaching. What are some challenges do you think you may run into? And then changes is essentially, could you change the tool that you're using instead of Google Slides? Or would you, you could do this on a piece of paper instead of Google Slides, or you could use a different tool like Quizzes Live. It's up to you. So go ahead and I would like you to choose one of your slides, write your name on it and start thinking of the connect of each of these boxes right now. In the chat box, how does one make the slide interactive? So, so you make the slide interactive by essentially um, just going to the share box on the very when you're when you're the editor of this slide, you make it viewable to anyone with a link so that they can edit. Anyone with a link can edit. So anyone with a link can edit. So you need to make sure you're on the slideshow. And then anyone with a link can go in and select the slide that they're working on. Sometimes if it's a new group of students, I will write their name of the students on the slide. So slide number two is John. Slide number two is Sally. I'll write their names on it for them. Or I can give the students a number that they're assigned to in class. And that number that they are assigned to corresponds always to the slide that they're assigned to. Right, so there's multiple ways to do it. It's just depends on what works best for you. There's another question thinking about simplifying some of these organizers for uh, intermediate ESL. Yeah, there's a wide variety. There's about 100 of these strategies so um, that are available. So you, you can choose whichever ones that you want to use and also to you can think about how can you modify these to meet where your learners are at. There's not a, um, they don't need to always be exactly what these look like. They can be pared down or paired up. It's not something that has to be, um, you know, etched in stone. Can you explain concepts again? Yeah, so concepts would be like how, what type of concepts would you like to teach with this or how or like how could you use some of these strategies with some of the concepts that uh, you may be teaching in your class. And then connection. Connections is like how can you connect this to some of um, the skills or some of your lessons that you may be teaching your students. There's another awesome question say can you explain again the directions for this class. Yes, so for this particular slide deck, I would ask students to write down what connections do you have here? So this is just for you guys as the participants. Um, this 
Fox here connections is how would you connect this, these strategies to, um, you know, what are you teaching in your class? Concepts is how, or, or basically what type of, like this person here is like curriculum that they're teaching. Then the challenges is essentially what challenges could you foresee with your students using thinking routines on Google Slides? Then changes, what type of changes would you make to these strategies or how that they are deployed to meet your students' needs or meet your needs? It looked like uh, somebody just jumping into slide to someone else's slide. How can you prevent that? So, like I mentioned just a moment ago, is that you can you can assign students various slides. So, like every student has a number, or I put the student's name on each slide. So that's one way I can do it. And what's nice is at the very end, once I'm having the students completed with editing, then they will. Um, I'll make it share, uh, view only. I'll get the editing rights away from everyone and I'll lock the slides so no one else can touch them. It'll just turn into essentially just a viewable slideshow at that point. Well, I love your answers thus far. I'll give you another couple of minutes. So now I took away my writing area and challenges. <laughs> There's a couple of uh, um, <laughs> but I think it was the last <laughs> Oh, did it turn yours? Change no, yours too? It, no, it was just kind of there in a conversation. Irma was in the one slides, and then the Rebecca started writing on the Irma. <laughs> See, mine doesn't even show Irma. When I went into Rebecca, it was blank. I, I, don't, I don't show so Irma on yours. Yeah, you didn't see the Persons. No, there's no name. Yeah, it doesn't show. And what you'll notice is that when it's the first time through, it's obviously you're going to have more of the hiccups. But after you make it routine, what I like to do is you have two or three of these thinking routines um, as part of your everyday instruction. So it's not like you're reinventing anything. It's just consistent strategies and consistently how you're um, utilizing the slides. So it's just an old take. A number of times where everyone's like oh i totally get this now it's going to take like any strategy or any sort of tool you got to build a routine so how can you back out if there are two people fighting over the one slide look see on mine i don't see any other name so you can see like the two you can see the two people here mm -hmm. and generally this is something that happens just the first time around and not everyone has um uh, yeah so for example Vicky put your name in a title so that makes it or that makes it you know when oh, someone's yeah. claimed when it's claimed then it makes it really easy if you have your name there then you're most likely not to have anyone uh claim your slide or if you have a number assigned to you generally um you don't have as many issues so I actually accidentally did away with my challenges box. The lighter pink is gone, so I can't type in there. Is there a way I can get that back? 
So you'd have just to go back. What slide number are you? So, so go ahead and put your cursor in the challenges box and go ahead and right click and click insert table. And then insert row. Right click. She just copy from a blank. She could copy from a blank slide too. There's multiple ways to do this. Yeah. Or you could make the slide as a background so the students won't be able to move anything and then just create their own text box and then. Yeah, so you can do that as well. So that way they don't yeah. make any from your presentation. Yeah. So that's way as well. So what we can do too is just do this. I keep low level ESL and that's a lot around. Yeah. Yep. Do it as a background. Yeah, so that way they don't get to move anything. Yeah. Those are all really good points. Yep. Yeah. And that's what's nice about these is they're really flexible. You can flex them to really essentially to the you know where your students are at. About two more minutes, and I'll show you just like I mentioned earlier is that I can see what the students, the trends are as I'm reading through this. And a fantastic strategy is when students are all done, you can lock these slides and you can have them go on a digital gallery walk. Then I could ask, hey, class, go view all your uh, classmates. It, um, you know, text read through it. You can have a pair share conversation thereafter, and then bring it back to talk more about some of these findings and make any clarifications as to what the trends are, whether students are understanding what you're trying to ask them or what type of feedback do I need to give them. And you, because you can see kind of their thinking in real time, which is what is fantastic about thinking routines and uh, interactive slides is that you can see what they're doing in real time. You can think, you can see and think what they're doing in real time and make adjustments. Okay, cool. So I want to move on. So you could, like I mentioned just earlier, that's how you would sequence the end of that particular um, slide. So for those that are online, I would like you to complete a uh, click here. And for those in person, um, actually, let's do this. So for those that are uh, here and online, go ahead and scroll through these slides. And what I'm going to do is, um, review everyone's answers thus far. This is from a previous conference. So go ahead and review these answers from a previous conference. And what they were asked to do is in the first box, right? What did you used to think about thinking routines? Did you know anything about them? Did you know anything about, you know, integrating them with interactive slides or Google slides, et cetera? And then, the next protocol is thereafter you write down now, now what do you think? Now I think, what do you now think about Google Slides? Or what do you now think about thinking routines? So spend some time right now reviewing what people have written in a previous conference. And what I'm gonna do right after is unlock that previous slideshow so that everyone can go to slide number 15 and on to add their own responses from this presentation today. So go ahead and read through and then go to slide number 15.
it lets me, I may have to reload. So yeah, if you're on this yourself, go to slide number 15 now after reviewing everyone's answers thus far. And I would like you to select a slide thereafter and write down, what did you used to think about this? And then thereafter, what do you now think? Uh. So yeah, good. Everyone go to after slide number 15, select your own slide and write your name, please. Write your name, please, because what I'm going to do for everyone that's participating here, I'm going to select your name, and for those that um, are here in person, you have an opportunity to win a book that I have written. So please, for those that are here in person, write your name on the slide. And um, after this, you'll be put in a drawing. So, And this can be done in groups too, by the way. You can have a couple of students work on each slide together. It's It could be a group of two students. It could be a group of three students, four students. You can assign them to a particular slide. And they'll complete it. So like I mentioned, there's a wide range of ways for you to implement this with students. There's a lot of freedom for you to incorporate the content and skills that you want them to teach. And like I mentioned earlier, you could add those various adaptions, such as showing students how to do voice typing and copying and pasting that over, um, including images. Sometimes <laughs> they, you can put videos instead. Remember, this is uh, you're not annotating, you're going directly to that link and accessing the slide. And this is something that you, like I mentioned earlier, you have to build the routine. You have to do this quite often to build the routine. But um, once you do, it's very, it's very clear to students, and it's very uh, it's a powerful strategy set of strategies. Um, got one more minute. And we'll review these last little bit of reflection. Be sure to put your name on slide number 15 and on.
All righty, so let's talk a little bit about anyone's reflection. So anyone in person here want to share what their thoughts were? It looks like Susanna, I know she's online. She says, um, I used to think this would be too hard for my ESL students, still think they would need to have some computer literacy and even challenging for me. Definitely, it takes time. So that definitely is a, as, you know, a response that I see often. It just takes, like I mentioned, you have to build it into your everyday routine. Sonia won't stop. This may have been too difficult. Can use this for a variety of different topics. Can be used with images. Now she says, can be modified to the level of my students. This can be used for several topics to expand critical thinking. Interesting example of uh, thinking routines can be used with images. Uh, Rebecca said that she didn't know how to at first incorporate thinking routines with technology. Um, and then she said it's a great way uh, to teach thinking routines as well as technology skills. I used to think Google Slides, uh, Vicky says, uh, Google Slides can only be used for presentations. Um, now she realized that um, they can also be used uh, to deliver a lesson, very interactive. Awesome. So that's just another thinking uh, I used to think now I think, which can be used at the very end of the lesson. It's also good for adult learners, so you can have them focus on metacognition skills and reflection. So I hope that you can connect with me.